effects of parasites on their host. Okay, so effects of parasites on their host. Malapit na tayo matapos. Okay, number one, consumption of the nutritive elements of the host. Okay, so we discussed this. Uh, a good example of this one is the Diphilobotrium latum. Okay, so the Diphilobotrium latum, which robs us, okay, of our vitamin B12. That's why heavy infection of Diphilobotrium latum would lead to what type of anemia? Megaloblastic anemia. Okay. What is the morphology of the RBC in the megaloblastic anemia? Is it microcytic or macrocytic? Okay, it's macrocytic, guys. So, ganun dapat yung pag-aaral nyo. Hindi yung parasitology lang. Parasitology lang. We try to correlate it with other subjects. Okay? Another example, we have hookworm infection. Okay? Necator americanus and ancylostoma species. Um, the heavy infection of these parasites can possibly lead to anemia. Okay? Bakit magkakaroon ng anemia? Kasi iniinom nila, kinukuha nila yung blood natin while they are inside our body. They rob us of our um, blood. Okay? That's why those are blood-sucking parasites. Okay, obstruction of passages. Okay, mga hookworm. So, kung si hookworm, megaloblastic anemia, ay baliktad. Diphilobotrium latum can lead to megaloblastic type of anemia. Hookworms can lead to, hookworm infection can lead us to um, iron deficiency anemia. Okay? So, pwede yan, iron deficiency anemia. Okay, obstruction of passages. So, that is heavy infection with adult ascaris may cause in intestinal obstruction. So, have I, I believe that you have seen already a lot of images circulating in the internet um, with a child na may malaking child. And after the surgery, anong mga lumalabas doon? Okay? Yung parang spaghetti. Yung parang spaghetti. Sorry naman na. That's why my father, my father doesn't like spaghetti. Kasi nakikita niyo yun sa mga ano, baboy. Ganyan. So, ayaw niya nung fight. Okay, ayaw niya nung fight because of that. White yung mga carbonara, spaghetti, ayaw niya nung mga pasta-pasta. Okay, obstruction of passages. So, common chancy, ascaris lumbricoides. Okay, another is bleeding. Okay, bleeding, examples are schistosoma. Okay, schistosoma eggs. Number four, the destruction of tissues. So, common dyan ang trochozoic of entamoeba hist histolytica. Okay, destruction of tissues. Trochozoics of entamoeba histolytica causes um, or secretes cysteine prote proteases, which digest cellular materials, okay? And also, it degrades the epithelial basement membrane, facilitating tissue invasion. So, kahit ang ilagay nyo lang dyan is, destruction of tissues, an example are, example is, trochozoids of entamoeba histolytica. Okay? Aside from that, another example is, hookworm. Okay, hookworm and Lishmania donovani. Okay, Lishmania donovani. Number five, compression of organs. Okay, compression of organs. An example is the hydatid cyst in the liver. Okay, question number five. Hydatid cyst in the liver or even in the brain, it can cause pressure. Kaya nagkakaroon ng compression of the organs. So, number 5 question. Baka hindi pala ito hanggang 5 lang na question. What, um, what parasite, okay, what parasite, um, 
produces the hydatid cyst. Okay? What parasite produces the hydatid cyst? So, yun. Hydatid cyst. Number six, release of toxic substances. Like, example, rupture of Echinococcus granulosus cyst. Okay? So, the rupture of Echinococcus granulosus, parang nailagay ko naman na yung spelling niya. Rupture of Echinococcus granulosus cyst result in anaphylactic shock. Okay? Result in anaphylactic, can re result to an anaphylactic shock. Okay, number seven. Number seven na ba tayo? Wala kasi dyan yung release of toxic substances. Okay, yung release of toxic substances, rupture of echinococcus granulosus cyst, result in anaphylactic shock. Number seven, opening pathway to secondary infection. So, the ulcer form as a result of Dracontulus medinensis infection exposes to bacterial and viral infection, even for the invasion of Entamoeba histolytica trophosoid that may lead also to secondary infection. So, Dracontulus medinensis. So, ulcers form as a result of Dracontulus medinensis infection exposes to bacterial and viral infection. Number eight, allergy development. So, allergy. Saan yan? Sa mga kagat ng arthropod. Bite of arthropod. Number nine, transmission of pathogens to man. Okay? So, um, it's like, a, um, it's under, ano, parang bite siya ng arthropod. So, we have here, lice transmitting rickettsia. Okay, so nasa ano na pala tayo? Effects of parasite. Transmission of pathogens to man. Example, lice transmitting rickettsia. Number 10, predisposition to malignancy. Okay, pwede kang ma-predispose ma to develop cancer because of the infection with bilharziasis. Okay, bilharziasis. Infection with bilharziasis predisposes to cancer or malignancy. Bilharziasis. Okay guys, malapit na tayo magtapos. So, ilang tanong na ba yun? Five na. Okay, effects of the host on a parasite. So, Genetic factors may affect, so we have here 1, 2, 3, genetic factor, nutritional status, and immunity. So genetic factors may affect the interaction of the host and the parasite. Guys, take note, sickle cell trait, okay, sickle cell trait, ang nagkakos ng sickle cell trait, guys, hemoglobin S, di ba, si hemoglobin S. Okay? Pero kung trait lang to, hindi to yung um, severe form. So, sickle cell. Sickle cell trait offers protection. Offers some protection. Against plasmodium falciparum infection. Okay? So, kung meron kang sickle cell trait, there's a possibility that uh, you are protected against falciparum infection. Another is the Duffy factor. Okay? So, the Duffy factor, however, it increases your susceptibility to plasmodium vivax. Increases susceptibility to P. vivax infection. Okay? So, plasmodium vivax infection. So, magkabalik tayo. Si sickle cell trait, it offers protection against plasmodium falciparum while the Duffy factor increases the susceptibility to P. vivax infection. What do you mean by Duffy factor, guys? So, that is uh, a blood antigen. 
Okay, a blood group antigen, kagaya ng blood type A, blood type B, the D. So, we also have the Duffy G, which is where for that as the Duffy factor. So, number two, nutritional status or the diet. Okay, so protein-rich diet is not suitable for the development of protozoans, while low-protein diet favors the symptoms of amebiasis. Okay, so immunity. So absolute immunity to protozoan infection rarely occurs. Okay, so it rarely occurs. Wala namang absolute ano, um, immunity. Okay, so all of us, even if you are very healthy, you are still susceptible to have parasitic infection. Okay? So, population at risk for contracting parasites. Population at risk for contracting parasites. Individuals um, in undeveloped areas in country. Okay? That should be individuals in undeveloped areas and countries or the developing countries including our beloved Philippines. Okay? So, refugees, immigrants, visitors from foreign countries, immunocompromised individuals because of their weak immune system, individuals living in close quarter, so just like for pinworm and terobius vermicularis, kung pare-pareho kayo ng higaan, tapos nangitlog na yung um, yung adult sa may pwetan ng bata, tapos hindi nyo pa siya nilalagyan ng underwear, kung saan-saan siya umupo, hinawakan mo yung upuan, hinawakan mo yung cellphone mo, sinusubo mo yung cellphone mo, o diba? Um, that's why it's there's a possibility that living in close quarters is putting you at risk of contracting parasitic infection as well as children who attend daycare center. Why? Because of their interaction with other um, other children. Okay? So, imagine you din, di ba mahilig mga batang magkamot ng kwet nila, makapati din kayo ng bata kayo. Malamang ako din. Baka pati ako din. So, Malapit na tayo matapos, guys. So, life cycle of a parasite. So, we have two types of life cycle. The simple and the complicated. Pinag-iisipan ka ba yan? So, simple, ganito lang siya. Meron kang ova, may larva, tas adult. Okay? Tatlo lang. Madali lang. Just like for Ascaris lumbricoides, mga, ano, mga hooper. Okay? Meron din silang ova, maghahatch yung larva, the larva will develop to become the adult. Okay? Simple. So, we have here, guys. Okay? Yan, yung mga putan. Okay, dyan lumalabas. So, we have here an example. So, we have a child here. So, di ba? Kinamot niya yung put niya. Okay. Tapos, ano nangyari? This is an auto-infection already. Bakit, ano, auto-infection? Okay? Kasi siya ulit yung nag-infect, na-infect siya ulit. So, meron na siya ng parasite dati. Kasi kinamot niya, tapos kumain siya. Okay? So, the eggs, the eggs that was ingested, of course, it hatched into the um, small intestine or in the, in the, yes, in the intestine. Ma'am, bakit hindi po namamatay yung, yung ano, mga eggs, yung mga parasite when ingesting them? we have this stomach acid naman which acts as a barrier or a protection against those infections. Diba? Ako na lang ulit magtatato. Total, hindi rin naman kayong nakakatanong. So, it's because um, the infective stages of this parasite resist the acidic pH of the stomach. Okay? So, kagaya ito, pinwar uh, sa pinworm, eggs, eggs ang infective stage na even as carries eggs. Makapal kasi yung covering ng mga, uh, ng mga eggs nila. That's why even with the acidic stomach, hindi sila nasisira. Pag naharating na sila ng small intestine, maghahatch na sila. And then, it will take them some time to develop into 
adult worms. Okay? So, mag-develop into adult worms. Sa colon, si pinworm. And then, at night, okay, at night, the worm, the adult worm, will migrate to the perianal area and dun na siya mag-hatch. Okay? It will hatch on the perianal area. So, kaya nangangati-ngati yan. Diba? Sa mga bata na tinati kasi meron palang nag-hatch. Okay, pag na-deposit na nung adult worm yung kanyang egg sa perianal area, okay, pag natagalan yun, hindi, hindi nag-poop yung bata, hindi natanggal, okay, so ano mangyayari? It will hatch into larva, okay? So, aside from the female worms, rapture, releasing eggs, okay, so dito hindi kasi yan eggs, so those are worms, okay? So, nag-hatch na sila sa may petain. Possible din naman that the eggs, okay, the eggs will be distributed in the environment. Okay? So, dito, na-distribute na siya sa environment. Lalo, for example, magkatabi yung magkapatid, yung isa meron ng infection. So, mahahawa yung isa. So, how about for the complicated? Kagaya ng mga relasyon. Hindi nyo na maayos-ayos. Char. Okay, so complicated, it involves several hosts. Yung kanina, di ba, it's very simple. Oval, larva, adult. Yun na yun. But for complicated, it involves several hosts. Yan na yung gumagamit na intermediate host and definitive host. Question. Okay, sagutan nyo na lang. Huwag nyo nang i-text on dito kasama. Classify plasmodium. Is it, it um, does it have a complicated life cycle or a simple life cycle? Complicated kasi it uses intermediate host and definitive host. How about for entamoeba histolytica? It's simple. Okay, it's simple. Why? Kasi meron siya lang isang host. Hindi ko sasabihin kasi nasa ano natin yan. Nasa assignment yan. So, in complicated, several hosts are involved. Developmental stages in environment or other host. Okay, so we have here a comparison. Just like for schistosoma species. Okay, so schistosoma species, for example, this is infected. This, indi this individual is infected, okay, tumatae siya. Okay, tumatae siya, ito naman, umiihi siya. Okay, umiihi. So, possible din kasi, that is for Japonicum, sa ihi siya na da-diagnose. And then, the environment is contaminated. Okay, so Miracidious snails are then infected. So, magkakaroon ng, dito magkakaroon ng um, development yung na-infect from the human inf uh, infecting the snail. So, what will happen? Many sarcari are released from the infected snail. So, ano mangyayari? So, lalabas ngayon si sarcaria from the infected snail, infecting other human. Okay? Paano niya i-infect? True penetration of the skin. Okay, penetration of the skin. So, Sercario, therefore, this is the infective stage because it will infect other individual. So, yan, papasok na yan sa system ng ibang tao. So, yun. Lunod siya pero naglalabas siya doon. O, diba? So, people infected by contact with Sercaria or Sercarie in the water. So, the schistosomule will then migrate in our liver. So, in the liver of the infected individual, huwag tayo. Okay, so adult male in the liver and migrate to the portal system. So, that is for hematobium and mansony. But for the japonicum, it will migrate to the small intestine. Okay, so the adult male for mansony will travel to the colon. But for the hematobium, that is... In the gastro-urinary tract system. Ang sabi ko kanina si Chaponi kung yun nakikita sa yun. Mali po pala yun. That is, schistosoma hematobium. Kasi siya yung nagkakaroon ng migration into the gastro-urinary tract. Okay? Pansin niyo meron din silang pagkakaiba ng eggs. As well as yung nub nila. Ito sa petan, ito sa side. Ito maliit ang yung nub. But we will further have a discussion in this one. Siguro nasa ano na sa midterms or finals. So, last slide, guys. Methods of parasite control. Okay? So, we have their drug treatment. We have uh, 
the most commonly um, the most common uh, drugs that are used lagi nyo may encounter is mebendazol okay mebendazol albendazol so we also have prasicantel for malaria infection sanitary control insecticide poisoning even meat inspection so for yung mga tinya and trichinella public education in personal prophylaxis so those are methods of parasite control okay so we have here the classification of parasites classification of parasite we have the kingdom so even if they are parasite they belong to the kingdom animalia okay so sub kingdom we have two here oh my, sorry we have the protozoa and the metazoa under phylum so we will cover protozoa for prelims we have rhizopodia the mastigopora okay the telosporidia or yes the telosporidia and the ciliata and for metazoa, there are three phylum, Platyhelminthes, Nemahelminthes, and the Arthropoda, but we will not discuss this, okay? There are, no, actually, we have Platyhelminthes, okay? Yes, the Nemahelminthes and the Arthropod. So for the class, under Platyhelminthes, we have the Trematodes and the Cestodes, the Trematoda and Cestoda. Under Nema Health Mentees, we have the Nematoda and the Arthropod, Insecta, and Arachnid. But we will only focus on this two phylum, Tati and Nema Health Mentees. So we will discuss uh, how many classes we have for Protozoa, Trematoda, Cestoda, and the Nematoda. Okay, so we have here the classification of the medically important. Um, parasites and again please familiarize familiarize yourself with them um and what class do they belong as well so are they intestinal or do they cause intestinal or extra-intestinal infection okay so uh, what else so that's all for our introduction to parasitology medyo mahaba ba pero mas mahaba pa rin yung clinical care kahit sobrang ang dami na ka it's so frustrating kasi yung mga ang dami kong nilalagay na notes, ang dami kong additional information na nilalagay pero na cut. But anyway, wala na na tayo magagawa. Um, so I hope guys, you understand a lot. Hopefully, marami kayong natutunan for our introduction to parasitology. Una pa lang yan guys, hindi pa kayo dapat may stress kasi maliit na maliit pa lang yun na portion. Okay, so I wish you all good health and happiness. Okay? Sana maging masaya kayo regardless of our situation now. Because take note guys, we cannot turn back time. Okay, hindi na natin maibabalik. So, ba't pa kayo magpapakalungkot? Okay, enjoy nyo na lang pag-aaral um, within your comfort zone. Kung sa mga bahay nyo, you, um, you treasure the time that you have so much time to spend with your parents. Okay? with your family. So, hayaan nyo na, nandiyan na yung pandemya, di ba? So, ma may stress ka pa ba? Lahat naman tayo nakaka-experience. Okay? Huwag na kayo mag-offer. Mag-aral na lang kayo. Okay? So, God bless everyone. Um, Pagtsaga nyo na lang yung boses ni Mang Suzy. Okay? Buti na hindi ko kayo na walang maingay. Nakakala nag-iingay ngayon. So, God bless and sana mag-aral kayo maigi. Road to RMTMD. Hi. So, bye.